Chapter 23 Money in Building Materials Boundless wealth in brick, wood, and stone, farmers who have untouched and unknown mines, a man with two million acres, how a farmer astonished a lawyer, a new way to measure land, men who don't know they are rich, are you one, more money in the builder's stone than in the philosopher's stone, secrets of brick making, the exploits of Lucky Baldwin, a man who lives in a glass house, the floor of the future, time is money, but the shorter the time, the more the money. It is certain that nearly all the structures now upon the earth will have to be rebuilt during the next half century. When we consider the immense cost and vast number of these buildings, aggregating thousands of millions of dollars, the demand for building materials surpasses all computation and imagination. During the next few decades untold myriads of persons will get rich either in this discovery of new fields for these materials, exploiting the old ones, or in the invention of new building matter. How large is your farm? inquired a lawyer of a Vernon farmer whom he meant to guy. The man of the law winked at his companion as much as to say, See what sport I will have with the old fool. Well, said the haymaker, I reckon I have about two million acres. Two million acres, gasped the attorney, gazing round. Pray, where is it? Down here, replied the farmer, pointing his long, skinny fingers at the ground. I have got a hundred acres on top, and I reckon I own about down to the middle of the wide earth. The man of the soil spake wiser than he knew. He was rich, but not exactly in the way he imagined, for a granite quarry of the finest kind was found on his land, which caused him to realize a large sum. 862. Stone Quarried Says a recent publication, a man who has a quarry of good building stone, easily accessible, is richer than if he owned a gold mine. But there are immense numbers of such quarries unworked and even unsuspected. It is not too much to say that there are at least a thousand farmers bemoaning unproductive land which contains beneath the surface that which can make them richer than anything they can possibly grow from the soil. 863. Artificial Stone duh. Many kinds of artificial stone are now employed, such as Ransom's Concrete, Portland Stone, etc. They are made by a mixture of cement, sand, and gravel, and are molded into blocks. The value depends upon the kind of cement. No really good lime for this purpose has yet been found in the United States. The man who can discover a calcareous deposit capable of making a good, silicious or argillaceous hydraulic lime will have the market for manufactured stone practically in his hands. 864. Baked Brick Duck Late improvements in baking brick have reduced the time required to bake 100,000 bricks from 14 to 4 days, and the amount of fuel from 40 cords of wood to 16. The following suggestions by a brick burner will show the path of fortune to those who can reduce the time still further. Mix a little charcoal in the clay. Double the length of the brick. If by either of these ways you can make the bricks a trifle cheaper while retaining their qualities, you have acquired a fortune. Lucky Baldwin, a man afterward famous for his mining and real estate speculations, made his first large money in brick burning. I had no experience whatever then, he said, but I studied up the subject, thoroughly mastered the details, and cleared $1,500 in a month. 865. Glass Brick Dot Another New Idea Why not make a brick of glass, partially hollow, so that, filled with rarefied air, it can be a non-conductor of heat? Such a brick would be a great improvement on the present method of constructing conservatories, greenhouses, and the walls of winter gardens. The plan is being tried in Europe, but there is no patent on the introduction and nothing to stop an American from introducing a new kind of hothouse. The adage about the man in a glass house may be realized yet. 866. Rubber Floors why do we go on in the old way, employing rough-sounding and creaking flooring, when there is a material which meets every want for a desirable floor? India rubber tiles prevent slipping, emit no sound under the foot, and have the additional element of an agreeable elasticity. It is a positive pleasure to walk on an India rubber floor. It is, of course, more expensive than wood, but the time is surely coming when every elegant dwelling, all expensive halls and public buildings, as well as the saloon decks of our first-class steamships, will have these improved floors. 
A man, ambitious to be rich and possessing a few thousands of capital, could hardly do a better thing than to manufacture rubber interlocking tiles, advertising them extensively and exhibiting models to builders.